All right, welcome to the exciting worlds of solving physics problems. I'm your official DJ. So we're going to be discussing two object problems and trying to figure out where a dragon apparently is going to be smacked with a catapult. Awkward. So first things first, I like to always draw myself a little sketch. So we've got an ob we've got a dragon flying with a constant speed here of something, I don't know, 30 meters per second. So I'm going to draw a dragon. Check that dragon out. Isn't that awesome? I did good. I didn't put wings on him. Look, wings. And it, I don't know what that is. Okay, it's dragon, sure. And he's trying, he's flying at 30 meters per second to the west. So 30 meters per second. West is left. So I'm guessing I'll be negative somehow. So put that there. Uh, we start a location that was 2,000 meters to the east of a castle. All right, so hold on. I got to do a brain check here. Never eat shredded wheat. Check. Okay, so here's my castle. Awesome castle. All right, so this right here, he starts at 2,000 meters. So I'm going to call my castle zero. All right, and the castle guard immediately sees the dragon coming, but it takes 45 seconds to load the catapult. Oh, my goodness. Uh, once fired, the catapult will launch a boulder at 40 meters per second. We want to know where the boulder is going to go. So we'll have a boulder that's be launched directly at him at 40 meters per second. All right, we want to know where the boulder is going to strike the dragon. So we're trying to look, you know, where are these two going to collide? Where are they going to hit? So, uh, let's list some givens. So, if I were to, I like to make a little little graph here. So, I'm going to do a position time graph. So, position time graph, xt. So, my dragon start at 2,000. 2,000. And then my other guy start at zero. But, he started 45 seconds later. All right, so we start at the 45 second mark, and then my dragon was going in the negative direction, so we've got one of these, and so this is my dragon, and then this is the boulder, and so it's going like this. How do spell boulder? I don't know how do spell boulder. B O L. There we go. There we go. So I got those two things, and so now. I'm going to actually write these into equations that I could then use. So one's going to be for my dragon, and one's going to be for my boulder. And so that's what we're going to start using to solve our problem. All right, so we're trying to figure out some of these equations here. And if you look at it, I'm just going to write down what I think for our dragon. So I just put a little D here for my dragon. And since this is a position time graph, I'm going to base all my equations off of this. All right, so this is going to become my model. And this is where you guys will see why I'm not crazy to put the delta T in here. All right, so for the dragon, we don't know the final position. The velocity is negative 30 meters per second. And then we've got our delta T plus our initial, velo initial position of 2,000. All right, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some more space here. You'll see why in a second. Now the boulder, all right, <clears throat> uh, the boulder, has, we don't know the final position of the boulder, but it is moving at 40 meters per second for a period of time, plus this uh, zero, all right? Now, we have to be very much aware of this 45 seconds. The, the boulder was not launched at the exact same time that the, the dragon came at, so we have to do a little shift here. And this is why I like my delta T. So you, you could go about one of two ways. You could solve for time and then realize time is is something else, uh, or, or you could go a different way. So I'm just going to put in here just to show how this, this could look. All right, but you got a choice. So I'm going to now expand our delta T to be our t minus our t initial. All right, since so you got to include your, your file minus your initial. And so for the dragon, the initial time was zero. So this, this goes away because that's a zero. So we just are left with our final time. But if we look for the boulder, we're going to get 40 times our final time minus our initial time, which was 45 seconds. And then the zero we don't care about because, well, we don't care about zeros. 
And so now, if you look at these are my two equations, which I can then set equal to each other and then start doing some math with, and then this will tell me the time that they will actually hit, not, not how long has passed, but this is the actual physical time they hit. So if I set these equal to each other, I then get negative 30t plus 2,000 equals 40t minus 40 times 45. And, and now it's just a bunch of algebra and, and you're just solving stuff. And so then you're left with t equals 54.3 seconds. So that's, that's our time. But that's not answering our question because we want to know where did the boulder strike. So we really want to know position. And so what I recommend doing is now you take this time that we have right here and you're going to put it and you're going to substitute in for both of these equations, all right? So you're going to take this guy and you're going to substitute into both of these. And if you do that, you discover, and I always do it for both, just to double check. Wow, something just happened weird. Uh, and then you get 371.43 meters as your answer to where they will actually hit. All right, but again, I always put it into both just to make sure that you know it's working uh, based on rounding you might get like 370 and then 372 i would probably say that that's a good a good idea that you have it right but if you get like 370 and then like 400 it's like oh uh, maybe i didn't do it right so that's how you go about these so again always do a nice little sketch pick a nice little model i went with a position time graph here and then i drew out all my equations based on my position time graph and solved for what i needed to know all right now if you want to there is an alternate way to do this and so i will show you that alternate way to do that all right so the other way to solve this problem is if you have a velocity time graph so let's just make some room here so i'll move that down a little and so now if I make a velocity time graph, it's going to look something like this, which might look a little weird at first, but hopefully you see where I'm going with this. So velocity time. If we look, the boulder was positive 40, but it started at 45 seconds. So in reality, it started here. And that was its trek. And then we have the dragon, which was at negative 30. And no, this is not to scale. Don't judge me. All right. So if we look at it, these are the two graphs. We don't know what, what time they're going to stop at. So we do know, though, that the area is our displacement. And we know the total displacement for these two combined is 2,000 meters. So if I look here, I could say, well, that's displacement one, that's displacement two. All right, so I've got this, that's that, and then we... All right. So I could also be like displacement one plus displacement two equals 2,000, just, just for clarification. So there's no questions as to what's going on here. And now all i got to do is say, man, how do you calculate the area of a... Oh, yeah, they're rectangles. Okay, cool, sweet. I can do this. So when you're laying this out, your number one here is 40 times this length here, which is going to be t minus 45, and then plus this area here, which is going to be 30, because we don't care about the negative, we just want the pure area, since we're adding those total areas together. Uh, that's going to be 30 times just the absolute time itself equals 2,000. And so now we only have the one variable of time, and so now you can solve. Uh, you basically get 70t equals 3,800. Oh, look, that's similar to what we had over here if you did some math. And so then the time is 54.3 seconds again and then all you have to do is use that time however you want so you could go back and say oh you know i'm going to use a you know position time graph or i'm just going to use the right equation for like the dragon or the boulder or whatever you want but you can use this way and i basically just said that um well the displacement is equal to velocity times time for the dragon 
That's not a D, that's a G. That's what am I doing? Two. All right, for the dragon. And since the dragon started at zero, its displacement is final mass initial equals its velocity, and the dragon's was. Where's my brain? Where's my brain? Where's my brain? Um, whoops, I, I got to back up. I screwed things up, but here, start that over again. So, displacement for, I should have done displacement for the boulder. That's what I meant to say, displacement for the boulder. But, whatever. Uh, displacement for the dragon, its initial position was 2,000 minus its final position equals the velocity, which is negative 30 times the time of 54.3. And, if the world likes me, which I hope it does, but I'm afraid of something, uh, 30 times 54.3 equals that. Times negative 1. Carry the 2. Divide by 5. Um, I did something wrong. I did something wrong. Because I'm getting not the right answer. Because I have a negative sign error. Oh, I have these reversed. Why didn't you guys tell me that? I had these reversed. That's I'm like, something ain't right. This is what happens when you just do stuff on the fly. You should always plan stuff out. Final, we don't know. Our initials, 2,000. And now you can solve uh, for x. And now you get x equals 371.43 meters. Which, as again, as you can tell, is the exact same thing. as that one. So uh, again, you can solve using a velocity time graph, you can solve using position time graph. Both of them, you know, you could write just two equations, which is finally what we did for the position time graph, and solve them. So this is how you, you can go through and you can check yourself and solve any of these types of problems. This is probably the hardest thing you could probably be thrown at you is when time is shifted. But fundamentally, they're all the same. So I hope that helps, and if you have any questions, please contact me.